Today we're going to talk about the skeletal system in your bones. So some fun facts. The skeleton consists of 206 bones, that's in the average adult. There are different shaped bones. You have flat bones, cubed shaped bones, and irregular bones. Bones, the structure of bone is mainly composed of bone tissue called osseous tissue. So you have three different types of bone cells. So the first one we're going to talk about is osteoblast bone forming cells that become active during the second and third months of embryonic life. So whenever the babies are in the mother's womb, this is when osteoblasts are formed. Then you have osteocytes, they're mature bone cells that maintain the bone. And then you have osteoclast, and those are responsible for reabsorption or the breakdown of bone. So we have two different types of bone tissue. So you have compact bone tissue and spongy bone tissue. So your compact tissue, the bone tissue, that's your hard and dense tissue found in the shaft, which is the long part of the bone, the diaphysis um, of long bones, and the outer layer of other bones. This is where the uh, Havasian canal is found here. And then you also have spongy bone. So that has, a, has more space than the compact bone. And those are found at the end, or the epiphysis of long bones, and at the center of other bones. So this would be where your spongy bone is, and then your compact bone would be here in the middle of the long bone. So what, can you recall what types of cells maintain bone structure? That would be your osteocytes. What are bone forming cells called at the very beginning? Osteoblast. And then what are the two types of osseous or bone tissue, and where is each type found? So you have your compact bone, which makes up the end shaft of the long bones and the outer layer of the other bones. And then your other one is called the spongy bone. And that makes up the end of the long bones and the center of the other bones. All right, next we're going to talk about bone marrow. So you have red bone marrow and yellow bone marrow. So the red bone marrow, that manufactures blood cells found at the end of long bones and at the center of other bones. So again, that's in your spongy bone tissue. And then the yellow, which is mostly fat, is found in the central long cavities of the bones or in your compact tissue, compact bone tissue. So you have bone membranes. So the membranes contain bone-forming cells that aid in growth and repair. So the membranes, you have your periosteum and your endoosteum. So your periosteum covers the outside of the bones. Peri, break it down. Peri means to surround or, you know, to cover. And then osti is bone, and then um is just a you know word ending pertaining to, and then endoosteum that lines the narrow cavity of the bone inside the bone. Endo meaning within, osteo, bone, um again is just a word ending. So bone growth and repair. Growth begins at the center of the shaft. It stops growing in length by the age by the late tween, uh, late teens or early twenties. So some of you. If you're in your late teens already, may have stopped growing. Some of you still have some chance to get a little taller. The growing areas form a line across the epiphysis, which is the end, which can be seen on an x-ray. This is known as your growth plate. Bone repairs itself during active bone formation. So if your bone is not actively forming anymore, your bones will no longer grow. The elderly have more difficulty in repairing fractures due to the bone renewal process begins to slow down. So bone functions, what are their purposes? One, they give you the framework of the body. The bones also protect your organs, like your ribs, protect your heart, your lungs, those vital organs. Serve as a layer to produce, or sorry, levers to produce movement. Again, your bones are, your muscles are attached to your bones and that's what allows things to move. They store calcium salts and they produce blood cells. So now we're going to talk about bone markings. So different bones have different types of markings. So one, we have projections. So one of the a type of projection is the head, which is a round knob-like end separated from the rest of the body by a slender region called the neck. So for example, this picture here of the femur, the top part right here, this is the head of the femur, and the slender part here is considered the neck of the femur. So next, we have process. That's a large projection of the bone. So, for example, the ulna that forms the elbow right on the end, the part where you hit, considered your funny bone, not so much when it gets hit. That's the hard part, it's the process. 
And then you have your crest, which is a distinct border or ridge, usually rough. For example, the top of the hip bone. And then you have the spine. This is a sharp projection from the bone surface. For example, the spine of the scapula or your shoulder blade. So you have bone depressions or holes. So one is a foramen. That hole allows a vesicle or a vessel or a nerve to pass through or between bones. You also have a sinus, which are air spaces found in some skull bones. So that kind of helps lighten the weight of our skull. Basically, just holes in, the, in our skull. Then you have fossa. That's a depression on a bone surface. So for example here, this is a picture of your scapula, your shoulder blade. This little area right here is just a depression on the bone surface. That's what allows your humerus to sit inside that socket to become your shoulder socket. Next is a meatus, or a short canal or passageway. So for example, of this of a meatus is the canal in the temporal bone leading, leading to the inner ear. So bone disorders. First picture on the right, top right, is of a cleft palate. This is a congenital, meaning at present at birth. Congenital deformity in which there is an opening in the roof of the mouth that did not fuse during embryonic development and can be corrected with surgery. The problem with the cleft palate is whenever the babies try to nurse or drink, the, uh, they're not able to form a good suction around the bottle, so it doesn't allow them to nurse properly. And also they can take in air through their nasal passage you know, when they're trying to take in um, formula or breast milk. Next is osteoporosis. This is the disorder of bone formation in which there is a lack of normal uh, calcium salt deposits and a decrease in bone protein. So the bones become very fragile. Osteoporosis is typically seen in post, uh, postmenopausal women, so women that have stopped having their periods. They typically is whenever they start developing osteoporosis. Next is osteomyelitis. So this is the inflammation of bone caused by pyogenic or pus producing bacteria. Basically gets into the bone, there's that bacteria, starts eating away at the bone causing inflammation and production of pus. Next is tumors. This is abnormal cell growth in bones. Can be benign, meaning non-cancerous, such as a cyst, or they can be malignant such as a osteosarcoma. Osteosarcomas are typically seen in young children in the tibia or fibula. So metabolic disorders, you have oste uh, osteitis deformans, also known as Paget's disease. This is due to an abnormal calcium metabolism. The bones undergo periods of calcium loss, followed by periods of excessive deposits of calcium salts, resulting in the bones being deformed. So the calcium deposits is what helps make the bone hard. So they start losing them and then all of a sudden start producing, you know, lots of excess deposits of calcium salts, causing the formation such as this, the man's forehead in the picture. Another metabolic disorder is rickets. This is a rare childhood disease characterized by numerous bone deformities. This is due to a deficiency of vitamin D, which prevents the absorption of calcium and phosphorus salts through the intestines. The bones become very soft and distorted. This is typically seen in very malnourished children in third world countries. Um, it's not really a very prevalent issue in the United States, but in countries in which they have very poor diets or they don't get enough sunlight, rickets can become very a big issue with children. So curvatures of the spine, we have three different types. The first one is kyphosis or hunchback, which is an excess exagger exaggeration of the thoracic curve. So the thoracic portion of the spine has an outward curvature that's very exaggerated. Next is lordosis, so also known as swayback. This is an excessive lumbar curvature, so the lumbar portion of the spine has an excessive curve, kind of causes it to, you know, push the cur the spine in on um, the lumbar region, causing a very exaggerated curve. Next is scoliosis, which is a lateral, lateral meaning to the side. So in this picture down here, bottom right. So it's a lateral curvature of the vertebral column, meaning it causes kind of like an S shape because it curves to the side. Can, that can cause issues with internal organs, you know, space within inside the thoracic cavity and where the heart and lungs can expand and properly grow. 
So changes in aging. So you have loss of calcium salts that start to decrease, causing you know fragile bones, decreased projection of collagen, and thinning of the internal vertebral disc, meaning causing the spine to start you know compacting the vertebral disc to compact against each other. So fractures. So a break or rupture in the bone is a fracture. You have different types. You have a closed, which is simple, not open wound. You have open, right here, in which the bone protrudes through the skin or an external wound leading to a broken bone, meaning you see the bone sticking out of the skin. Or down here you can have a, a green stick, typically seen in young kids, in which one side of the bone is broken, the other is bent, usually, again, in children. So in this picture here, this side on the right is still together, but it's split on the left side. So you can have impacted, the broken ends of the bone are jammed into each other. Like if you were to jump off, say, the roof of a building and your bone gets squished into each other. So um, there's actually not a picture. Next is comminuted, the bone is splinted or crushed, meaning it was, you know, you're squished or something hard hit it and crush the bone. Something fell on top of you, for instance. Next is spiral. The bone is twisted apart, such as in a skiing accident. So if you suspect a person having a spiral fracture, do not move them. Wait for help to arrive. The next is depressed. So down here, this bottom right picture. The bone becomes depressed after a blunt force trauma. So for example, hitting a hammer into a skull can cause a depressed fracture. And that concludes our video.